Hey friends, welcome back to Astrology Today. My name is Mel Rose and this is a preview episode for the Deccan coming up starting Tuesday, April 11 and going through April 20th. So uh, the sun is in Aries. This is going to be the final 10 days the sun's transit in the land of Aries. And you know, when the sun is in Aries, this is the beginning of the solar year. It's the it's the beginning of spring, right? So we're in about the third 10 days of spring. And, um, you know, Sun and Aries is a time when we're taking initiative and making fresh starts and getting really active, uh, you know, especially in, per in pursuit of those things that help us sort of achieve our purpose in life. So uh, that's Deccan 11, April 11 through the, 20 through the 20th, 2023. And this Deccan corresponds in Tarot with the Four of Wands, which in brief, uh, you know, is characterized by keywords like community, home, and celebration. This is really a time like where we've made a collective effort to achieve something and having achieved it, we get to sort of kick back and relax and celebrate. Uh, the moon will start in Sagittarius this decade and it will actually end up in Taurus. I put it through Aries there, but it'll end up in, it'll end up in Taurus on the 20th. So let's get started. Tuesday, the 11th of April this this year the moon is a waning gibbous so we just had the full moon and uh and it's and the shadow is starting to grow across the face of the moon now this is the time when we are reflecting on how things were going for us running up to the full moon when we were trying to culminate our goals um you know and and noticing what worked for us and what didn't work for us. And having noticed what didn't work for us, then we can plan to start letting that stuff go. Don't allow it to clutter up your life. And that's stuff and things. It's also thoughts, attitudes, dispositions, emotional crutches, uh, you know, ideas that you thought were good, but no longer actually work for you. That kind of stuff we're, we're planning to release at this time. And it's in, and it's in Sagittarius. So it's a very philosophical kind of uh, of idea that we have about what kind of improvement we're going to make in our life by letting go of these things. That day, Venus is trying to Pluto. And, and this has been coming up for several days already. We've been under its influence, but this is the day where it culminates, where it's at its its greatest amount of strength. So Venus is our receptive nature, what we like, love, and can't get enough of, what we want to get, what we try to draw in or attract to ourselves. And that's attention, affection, regard, gifts, compensation, money, jewelry, <laughs> nice cars, whatever it is that, that you idealize receiving, that's that's what Venus is about. And then Pluto is our transformer. It's, it's the bringer of endings and beginnings. And so, um, you know, that can be a little bit of a scary idea when you get Venus, the get romantic and materialistic Venus, uh, you know, combined with this force for transformation, for sort of death and rebirth, ending and beginning. But the trine aspect there is a blessing. It says you will have really good ease of functioning. So any transformations that, that are happening in terms of your relationships with, uh, with people you value or with things that you value, uh, you know, it, it's intense. We feel passionate. We are more deeply feeling and more interested in our intimate relationships, especially. And, you know, this can be transformative just in terms of like, you know, I, I thought I loved this person, but I didn't realize until now just how attached I am to them. And so, you know, that can transform your idea about your level of commitment to that person. So that's just an example. And you can carry that over to financial things too. I thought I valued having this, but now I see, you know, how how integral it is to me living the life that I want to live, like my cell phone, right? <laughs> and and so, you know, I value it that much more and I'm gonna I'm gonna set aside you know, some money in my budget maybe to have a have a better version of it or to or just to keep it in good repair, right? Uh, Sun also conjunct to Jupiter that day. This is the luckiest day of the year, really the days leading up to Tuesday the 11th and the days following it, say through like Thursday or Friday. Sun conjunct Jupiter once a year. And this is our sense of purpose in life, the things that we're ambitious uh, about in enfolded under pressure in the same place in the sky from our perspective with Jupiter, the planet for expansion, for growth, for good fortune, okay? Jupiter says, oh, you like that thing? Here's seven more, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's what we love. Optimism, generosity, you know, this sense that things are getting better, this sense that we are growing and expanding. It's a good 
Fortune 5 for per personal, professional, and spiritual growth, okay? And these are in Aries right now, Sun and Jupiter in Aries. So um, that's also very optimistic, but it's also very driven and active. So I'm going to say in these days leading up to Tuesday and walking away from them really all the time, but you know, now is a great time to be making a start on something you would like to see multiply. Now is the time to be actively engaged in doing something, taking an action that you want to do more of. See, so you, you know, if you want to take more walks to see the sunset, then it, now is the time to take to start taking walks to see the sunset, right? Um, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to spend more time studying, then now is the time to enroll in that program that you want to study. And it's for your benefit. It will multiply whatever it is that you, whatever it is energies that you're working with at that time. It'll multiply your ability to expand, to grow, to take on new knowledge, new understanding, new experiences, uh, all toward the, you know, all toward the effort of, of um, sort of expressing your purpose in life. Very good energy, very positive. Please take advantage of these good fortune vibes by taking actions, by being active, by being, uh, you know, driven, by showing initiative on things that you want to see multiply in your life. Thursday, the 13th of April, um, the moon will be in Capricorn then. This is the third quarter moon. So that's the sun square the moon. That's what makes that, that half moon shape that you see in the sky. Uh, twice a month, once in the first quarter and once in the third quarter. So we're halfway here between the full moon and the new moon. And uh, this is when we sort of shift gears. Before this, we've been reflecting and planning to release things that no longer work for us. This is the day that we bring ourselves out of the reflection mode, out of the planning mode, and start turning our attention to taking action, to release. Again, not just stuff and things that are no longer working or cluttering up our space, but also thoughts, attitudes, dispositions, emotional crutches, those kinds of things. Now is the time to be like taking the action, doing the thing that gets rid of it, to, that puts it, pushes it out, okay? Uh, and that's that's just the third quarter moon. And then in Capricorn, that's about uh, sort of, that's about work and it's about sort of uh, institutional power. It's about, it, it's about dedication. It's very conservative. So uh, that third quarter moon is, you know, really about, you know, uh, releasing things that seem frivolous is what I'm going to say. Releasing things that seem to be a little uh, too much extra. Le releasing things that, uh, you know, that sound like nice ideas, but are not very realistic ones, right? <laughs> okay. And then the sun is also square. And the moon is also square to Jupiter that day. So, you know, sun was just conjunct to Jupiter, same place in the sky. If the sun is square to the moon, then the moon is also square to Jupiter. It's, a, it's the same aspect. And, uh, you know, moon and Jupiter usually get along really well. We feel generous. We feel expansive. We want to share our good fortune with others. Uh, you know, we want to, we want to socialize, uh, and, and it's okay to do that when the moon is square to Jupiter. Uh, but, um, you know, we want to be careful against overindulgence of, uh, you know, substances, food, you know, just in, in general things that we like to indulge in when we are celebrating and socializing. We, we want to be careful about overindulging. We also want to be careful about overcommitting or saying that we can give more money, time, interest to a situation or a person, place or thing, um, you know, than, than we actually have to give. And then on Friday, the 14th, the moon will be in Aquarius. And now we switched from that waning gibbous. We went through the third quarter. Now we're in the waning crescent, right? So this is the time when we are taking action to re release until we get to that new moon on Wednesday. So we're, we're actively letting things go. Moon is in Aquarius now. So it's more of a humanitarian principle. It's more of a greater good principle. So whatever it is we're trying to, uh, to release or let go of, those are things that that uh, detract from the common good, right? Those are things that uh, might help me a lot, but they don't help other people a lot. And so uh, it's not, you know, or, or worse yet, it causes a detriment to other people when I'm helped. We don't want to have that in our lives. It's not, it's not good energy to be hanging on to something that, you know, that I am privileged to have uh, access to, but that nobody else is privileged to have access to, right? Uh, so... And that's in terms of collective support and, and uplift. 
So we're acting to release those kinds of things. And Venus is square to Saturn that day. Again, we've been working with this vibe for a little bit. Today is the culmination of its full strength. Venus square Saturn uh, puts us under stress in our romantic lives and our financial lives because Venus, again, it's about what we like, love, and can't get enough of, what we'd like to receive in terms of regard, recognition, love, affection, and also gifts, compensation, money. Um, and Saturn is is very Saturn is very conservative uh, and very uh, very interested in just structures and networks for support. So uh, it can have a, a sobering effect and it can have a cooling or a depressing effect on on another planet when especially when it's square here. Okay, so the challenge is going to come up where uh, you know in our love life or in, in terms of something else that we value that we'd like to have uh you know that we that was some nice thing we like having you know uh we're, we're gonna meet some stress point we're gonna meet some delays something's gonna cool off it's gonna feel like oh i can't have what it is that i want right now and that triggers a fear response where you think, oh, I'll never get what it is that I want. I'm, I've been working so hard for this and I want it. I've been calling it in and it's not here yet. Why is it? Right. And so that fear then uh, turns into criticism like sour grapes, like, oh, oh, well, I didn't want that anyway. It wasn't a very good opportunity or, or that they're not really a very good person anyway. Right. Uh, so the challenge there is to understand that. Uh, you're under stress and and you're having a fear response because you're being delayed. You because there's a boundary put up. There's something that's uh, that's making you wait to get what it is that you want, and uh, and not to respond with you know this sort of um, fearful, catastrophic thinking criticism of the other uh, by doing that. You know, try try to be loving in your heart, or at least try not to. Uh, um, how do I want to say? Try not to express your fear and criticism in a way that uh, that will make it even harder for you to eventually get that thing you desire to have coming your way, all right? And then on Wednesday, the 19th, we have the new moon in Aries. This is a time when we, we come out of that action mode, acting to release. Uh, the new moon is the end of the cycle and the beginning of the cycle, right? And this is the time when we come back to the present. We're not, we're no, we're no longer reflecting. We're not looking to the future just yet. We're going to come back into the present and really appreciate the clean slate we created for ourselves with all of this release. Really appreciate the time and the moment and the space we live in. Really give thought to what materials we have at hand, what know-how we have at hand, and, and appreciate the moment and what it is right now. And then we take in mind those things that we have and we begin again to think about what we'd like to create over the next couple of weeks. Think about the goals that we have that we're already working. Think, think about other short-term goals that, that we have that we need to achieve uh, soon. And, and you know, after, after we've come back to the present, we go ahead and begin again to create, to take things on, especially in this week between the new moon and the first quarter moon, what we'll want to do is be uh, setting intentions, setting goals for ourselves, and making unplan making plans to unfold those goals. All right, so it's a it's still a reflection. <laughs> it's uh, it you know we go from reflection to action to reflection to action. So you know ha having done a lot of action to release, now we're moving back into a reflection to create mode. And then when we get to that first quarter, we'll do action to create. So here we are. And um, attending this new moon is the solar eclipse. So that's really cool. It's the beginning of the eclipse season for this year. We'll have this uh, solar eclipse. In, um, we'll have this solar eclipse. I've got it written down as the 20th, but it's the 19th uh, in Aries. And this, you know, eclipses are, eclipses can really be challenging, okay? They just bring about a lot of shakeups. There's revelation, especially when the sun goes behind the moon. It's like um, the shadow is being exposed, right? The part, the side of the moon that we can't see is, is all lit up, <laughs> right? And all we can kind of see is the shadow. So it's a little confusing, but it also just means like stuff is coming up from, from our interior you know, our intuitive depths, stuff can be revealed to us, uh, you know, about ourselves or, you know, we can have those, um, 
uh, realizations uh, uh, of transformative developments uh, at this time. And it's not always very pleasant. I'm just going to go ahead and give you the heads up on that. It's Aries. And so uh, it's a little active. It's a little, um, <laughs> it's a little uh, initiative taking, but it's also a little impatient, restless, irritable. So, you know, I, I always just recommend sort of being uh, alone and indoors <laughs> during the solar eclipse. Uh, sun contract moon, this is a time to be, you know, sort of keeping your own counsel and reflecting on, on your own well-being at this time anyway. So we'll have this solar eclipse and then in, in just a week or two, we'll have, yeah, just a week or two, we'll have that lunar eclipse on May 5th. That'll be in Scorpio. And then we'll have another solar eclipse this year uh, in, on October 14th, and that will be in Libra. So, uh, you know, we're, ha we're shifting here between um, nodes of fate, which that's a whole other discussion. But, you know, we're, we're moving from the Taurus-Scorpio dichotomy into the Aries-Libra dichotomy. So it's, it's action and then it's justice. It's, it's taking action to create balance, right? Uh, that's what we're working on this year. <laughs> we're more on the active end of this the, at this time than on the creating creating balance and where where we'll be, you know, while the sun and the moon are in Libra. But that's looking ahead. And then um, Thursday, April twentieth, the sun moves on into Taurus. We begin that next decan on the twenty first. Um, you know, when the sun is in Taurus, we're less about the, the action and the initiative and the drive, and we're more about, uh, we kind of slow our pace in the world and we, we become more methodical, more sensitive and sensual. We're interested in how things physically feel to us, uh, and we're more receptive because Taurus is ruled by Venus, right? It's about what we like, love, and can't get enough of. So, uh, you know... Sun in Taurus, we work better when we're on a good defense uh, or or giving defense, giving resistance. So start thinking about those those boundaries that you're going to start putting up <laughs> when the sun goes into Taurus on the twentieth. Also, also the sun will be square to Pluto that day. So you know, expect a little bit of power struggles, right? Defense and resistance coming in. Expect a little struggle for control with uh, with uh, uh, other people, a little struggle for control with maybe your technology or some system or workplace that you work within. And, uh, you know, ex expect things to sort of uh, fall apart and be and be transformed into something else. Yeah. Sun square Pluto. Fortunately, that'll only be a day or two of that kind of energy. All right, so that is Deccan 11 for this year, April 11 through 20. I'm so glad I was able to get this up this time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do them all this year. <laughs> I, I, I've uh, not shown up for two of them so far, so I'm gonna try to do all of the rest of them this year. Anyway, thank you for bearing with me and thank you for tuning in. I truly appreciate your presence here. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, click that notifications bell. It helps me a lot when you engage. So also leave me messages. Let me know what's going on. Leave me comments, okay? All right. See you all in the next episode.